This is Ambitious Angel reporting at the International Beauty Show, year 100, all right? And I'm here at the Bagelist Bo Pro Booth, and I found some of the legends of the industry here at the booth, all right? We got Frank. Frank, welcome to WooCut TV, brother. How you doing? Good. Welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely, brother. Tell the people a little bit about yourself, where you're from, man, and how long you've been cutting hair. I've been cutting out here for about six years. I'm out of Orlando, Florida, representing Babyless for Barbers. That's what I'm talking about, man. Florida, we in the building. And we have Stay Gold 31. Sophie, welcome to Woo Cut. How's it going? Thank you for having me. We had you here last year. There's been quite a big difference from the last time we caught up to here this year. Last night, you were a recipient of a pretty prestigious award. Tell us about that. We were at BarberCon for the Barbershop Connect uh, Barber Battle and Showcase and they presented me a Female Barber of the Year 2017 and it took me by surprise. I, If you were there, it was a very real moment. It was just kind of like, it just made sense to where it felt like everything you've ever done up to this point was finally returned. And it was two seconds, but it was like the biggest accomplishment that I have ever felt in an instant like moment. So it was it meant a lot to me. Yeah. Congratulations. I know that honestly you put in a lot of hard work. You know, you're not just talk about it, you the results speak for themselves, all right? Talk to some of these young lady barbers out there that are kind of following your footsteps that might be discouraged of being in a male-dominated industry that, you know, you're a little bit of a shining light for these ladies now, okay? So talk, look into the camera and I want you to talk to them. Tell them, you know, some of the things that you've gone through or words of encouragement so that you can pass on. Right. So the main thing is, you know, you're gonna get a lot of obstacles. People are gonna doubt you. People are gonna question your ability. But if you practice hard at what you do and you're focused on what you have to get done, those those clients are gonna see that in you because confidence is contagious. When you're when you're feeling like you're good and you're and you're proud of what you can do, those clients will come. But it has but it has to exceed the value, right? The price has to exceed the value. So you have to build yourself up to a point where you feel like the value and what you can offer is gonna be able to take you to higher places. Well, congratulations once again. Honestly, I can't wait to see what you keep coming up with um, and more and more advances to your career. It, honestly, it's a testament to your hard work, so congrats, all right? Thank you, thank you. Frank, talk to me, man. There's a lot of barbers in that Orlando area, man. I, I've hosted a couple events in Florida, man, and there's nothing like Florida when it comes to barbers. Not just Orlando Barbers. I mean, I think Orlando Barbers is doing a great job. Uh, I would say keep doing up the great work. I know a couple of them out there for Joel Squeak, Urban Barber. Uh, they're all doing an amazing job, and I'm really proud to say that I work in Orlando with people like that. Uh, mind you, a lot of barbers have been working for a lot of years, and if you get tired of really doing what you're doing, I mean, really all you gotta do is really what you put in is what you're gonna get out. So, I mean, uh, just carry yourself, you know, with dignity. Uh, sometimes I feel, at times, being called a barber, and, and this might sound kind of crazy, it's a little disrespectful because it gives me that urban, that urban look. Um, I'm more than just a barber. I'm all about customer service. And if you want to grow in this industry and anything, you have to start with your clients first. And it's giving that customer service and giving that quality service. It all starts at home. You know, your parents say that. So it all starts at the shop. What you produce in the shop, this then what you're going to produce on the stage or at a big industry in the big, or going into corporate America. So you have to start with what you have. You can't expect to have a, a brand new Bentley if you can't take care of the, the roof you have the house. So if I can say anything, it's, it's always put 110% at the shop, get there early, close the shop late. Even if you didn't cut no hair that day, at least you yourself know that you put in the effort. And again, just be constantly push. And I can only say that because that's what I've done. I can only be a testimony to people and just look at me and just say, hey, it can happen. Because if I came from the east side of Orlando and I'm able to be on multiple stages all over the United States, you guys can do it too. Hey, you couldn't have said it any better, man. Honestly, um, a lot of these guys look at maybe work and they like to critique other barbers' work and say, oh, I could give a better fade, I could give a, or I could give a better undercut or do a better design. If skills were, what we're selling, would be a lot of people out of work. But it's not about skills, it's about presentation, it's about customer service, it's about professionalism. 
it's a whole package. And if you're if you're more focused on other people's flaws, it's a reflection of yourself. Because when you're taking care of your own self, you're not gonna have time to critique anybody else. If anything, we should be coming together as an industry because barbering is looked at at a lower level. Like some people think of that as if you're like working at McDonald's. And that's what something I used to feel because people would ask, like, what do you do? And I'd be like, I'm a barber, and they'd be like, Oh, okay, that's cool, you know? And and it's like we have to work together. So if you're not gonna say something nice, then put more time into what you're doing. Like, why do you wanna waste your energy? On, on something else that's that's hurting the industry because that it, all it takes is a one group that doesn't want to grow and it's going to affect that entire area you know in the areas that you work we have to come together because if we're if we're holding our own we're talking to other uh, owners and workers and they're doing the same thing it's going to help allow us to kind of level up and bring barbering definitely to a higher standard to where it should be because what we do it's a very detailed skill it's not something that you can do when you, when you meet hairstyles that can't do it, they understand it. They're starting to respect us now because they're like, wow, I actually tried doing that and it, did, and it was very hard. So there's no difference between barbershop or salon. The only difference is most salons have a little bit more professionalism in their shops. So if we brought barbering up to that level, the, the price points would be exactly the same. You know what I mean? And every barber deserves to make a lot more money. Talk to me about price points. You know, you said you're in Florida. You're in sunny Cali, California, and LA, man. I was talking to uh, Hair God Zito. I just did an interview with him. He said now he's charging up to $2,000 to do a hair color for three hours. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's setting the bar pretty high. But talk to me about the price points in your areas and the services that you guys provide. Uh, we'll go with you first, Frank. All right. My area, I mean, we still got a couple guys on the bidding, but again, Customer service is what you, what you, what you, is what sets you apart. I mean, uh, we can all sell a haircut, but really, you can do a haircut. You can do a haircut. I can do a haircut. So it's basically the customer service that you provide. Again, in my shop, I include hot towels, I include uh, facials, I include all that. So the price range starting would be anywhere from thirty-five to almost a hundred dollars for a haircut. You know, depending on what the service is, we do give the option to have a regular service if that's what you want. Because not everybody can afford uh, a, a certain thing, but that's, but that's why I got all the barbers as well in the shop, you know? Not everybody's going to sit in Frank's chair, you know? Not everybody's going to sit with a Sophie. Um, again, not everybody wears Jordans, you know? So, so, I mean, but then again, it's sometimes the people that have Jordans that are complaining about the price. You know, there's the people that got the Yeezys that walk into the shop, but then say, $60 for a haircut? I mean, are you serious? I mean, we work really hard. We don't get vacations. You know what I mean? You might see us out here, but we're constantly working. One stays to another. We barely eat. We go eat over there real quick. And, 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 and even in the shop, you know, I see too much this. And, you know, if, if you do get to a certain level, I, I would say, you know, uh, if you want change in your shop, if you want to increase your prices, you have to develop change. Okay, I see too much of, I want to get paid more. I want, I want, I want, I want. But what are you giving? You understand? Like, if you're not if if you're not giving and you're not reproducing or you're not producing something, then how can you how can you self value yourself? And if you're not big on Instagram, you have to give first in order to receive. So you can't sit there because I still got people in Orlando that might drive by the shop and not know who Frank the Barber is. But you know what? I'm still willing to compromise and give somebody a haircut. Hey, that's too much money for me. You know what? I'm going to do it at this price for the first time. But after they sit in my chair, they're like, you know what? I'm going to continue to come here. I, I, I know why you charge this, and I want to come back next Friday. So sometimes you have to give in order to receive because you can't just sit there and expect everybody to know who you are, you know? Not everybody has social media. Not everybody has Instagram, Facebook. And yes, it's big, but you still got your people that do hands-on. Hey, what's up? How you doing? My name is Frank. I like to cut your hair. So, talk to me about the price points in LA. So, in LA, everybody always says, oh, because you're in LA, you get to charge that. And it's not true because I was able to double charge in a bad area based on just how I would market my, my services. And it's not about doing the best haircut. You don't have to be the best haircut to charge a lot. Believe it or not, there's a, there's somebody that charges three fifty for a male haircut. Well, now, when you hear that, I'm not gonna go and talk crap about that. I'm gonna look at that as motivation. I'm like, what can I do to get to that point? I would love to cut two people a day instead of cutting 20, 30, whatever, breaking your back, missing, you know, all sorts of meals. And when I hear that, I'm like, okay, cool. So what I do is, 
I learn a lot of different skill sets and I create packages and I'm like, what can I do to make it better? Because I want them to know that when they're paying me whatever money I'm charging, that I felt like it was worth it. Then they feel like, oh, you know, it's it's this amount. You can't look them in the eye and tell them how much it is because you're insecure about your own work. So when you feel confident enough to, to learn and, and push yourself to do that, you're gonna be able to charge as much as you want. Look, look at hair at Zito. $2,000 for a hair color, confidently, and people are gonna pay that. Because they respect his work, he he specializes in what he does, he's found ways to to make that his like main thing, and people want that, you know? And it's the same with haircuts. They think there's no money in men's haircuts. They're coming in quicker than a woman's haircut. That all adds up together, you know what I mean? So when I hear people charging a lot, that motivates me, it drives me. Instead of me saying like, oh wait, does that come with a massage? Because that's what I get all the time. It's like, no, it doesn't come with a massage. It comes from the time that I've educated myself. It comes from the time that you get to sit here comfortably and not have to worry that your hair is gonna come out something different. You're gonna know, like if I go to Sophie, I know she's gonna give me exactly what I want and help me figure out of, uh, anything else that I would need. You're, you're helping to create a picture. Because they might not always know. You just get, you get ideas and you're like, okay, I can add this and do this. And they're gonna appreciate that because they want someone that does variety. They're not gonna want that guy that's like, oh, I'm gonna get the same thing every single week. So it's very, very important to keep to educate yourself in every style because that's what's going to bring you all those different variety of clientele. Like, I don't want to do bald face all day. I want to do some longer hairstyles, some of those GQ cut styles, like those who have money, a lot of money. Yeah. Awesome, Sophie. Thank you guys so much. I know you guys got a bunch of clippers to sell and cuts to give out here. All right, guys? So I appreciate your time. I let the people know where they can follow the rest of your journey on this, on the gram and off of Facebook, all right? Uh, Facebook would be Frank Soto, S-O-T-O. And on the Instagram, always Frank the Barber. Frank D-A Barber. Mine is Snake 31 And on uh, Facebook, you can find me and my full name is Sophia Justine Thank you guys so much for your time. Who Cuts TV, connecting the beauty and barber industry through technology, media, and events like this one right here. Stay tuned for more coverage of the International Beauty Show and the Babylon's Pro Team. All right. Who cuts CB out? Woo.